Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we are at I some point. Yeah. 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 Oh, oh boy. Yo, you just want to tell you like, hey, we're going to use our prep time. Yeah, let me know when you actually use our prep time. Okay. okay. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Very late. Yeah. 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 Can we, we can't prep as well, right? Yeah, you can. Okay. You can use that. I just didn't know where to go. Yeah, it's basically, yeah. Yeah, I thought it was a little people asking that. So we'll try to use them. Let's yeah. kill two birds with one. Yeah. We'll try to use some of them for you guys, too. That was good. Okay. Let's pick one up. Have y'all seen people getting interviewed? No. I got interviewed for them for, like, a program. Yeah, they've been going around interviewing people after their debate, and asking them, like, how they felt about it. Oh, oh. oh. Like, oh. 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 You want some of your footage? I started crying when they told me. It was so cool. <laughs> 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 it changed my life. I want to be a debater forever. <laughs> okay, where's the app? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, We're so sorry. No, you're good. Okay. Do we want to just... I mean, he's a third speaker. I well, I wasn't sure. I was gonna ask if I'm gonna be he honest would need to know a little bit, maybe about the art. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if I'm being completely transparent here, even if he were here, he probably would not be taking notes. Mm. So <laughs> yeah. And we can still wait, but I'll I'll give him until I'll give him until two. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. He said he's walking. I bet he's searching for the room itself. Did he know it's the third floor? Uh, 339. Oh, so it's like right across from the Chick fil A, so he needs help. He's just right. having right. to refute the attack speech, so I feel like as long as he's able to hear the attack speech, mm -hmm. he should be good. Mm -hmm. okay. um, and then, yeah, she it goes first, speech. and then, like, they go, so, like, they'll, he'll probably at least hear both of those two, and I feel like that's more important as well. Yeah. So we'll start, we'll see, 205. And then yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> if he's not here, then we'll just start. Okay. And everyone's been really picking up a little early, so I'm not too worried about yeah. it. Yeah. And then, as soon as basically the speech is done, just go start your speech. Does that make sense? Like, don't wait for like my go ahead or anything. Just speak and I'll time you as soon as you start. Cool. Okay. Awesome. So you Thank you. Do, like, a little waiting. Yeah. Do we have time to like, like, or go downstairs? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm not going to be like, like, not like the oh, second we get up there, okay. Start your speech as you walk up. Yeah, because you're using your Yeah, I just need that setting off, so you okay. should just be able to see what you're doing. And then, yeah, and then I'll give you, if you're not looking at it, I'll give you the. He's trying to find the room. There he is, there he is with the hat. nationwide for state and private colleges all. The University of California, San Francisco stated on August 5th, 2021, that a study from China reported that people infected with the Delta variant can carry 1,000 times the viral load as those infected with the original virus. 
not only are these variants more dangerous, but they are more infectious as well. We have to take action now to help prevent more needless deaths that will happen when the next wave does occur. A few definitions. Mandate defined by Oxford is, in this instance, mandates are defined as the authority to carry out a policy or course of action regarded as given by the electorate to a candidate or party that is victorious in an election. A vaccine defined by Oxford is a substance used to stimulate the production of antibodies and provide immunity against one or several diseases prepared for the causative agent of a disease, its products, or a synthetic substitute treated to act as an antigen without inducing the disease. The pro side affirms that mandating the vaccine on college campuses will not only benefit the individuals, but help relieve stress that the medical field is experiencing because of this pandemic. We also affirm that a vaccine mandate will not affect education legality and that other measures can be accommodated to individuals who wish not to take the vaccine, such as online classes, online tutoring, as well as online study groups for other individuals who have decided likewise. Accommodations will be put in place. Nearly 71.4% of individuals in hospitals due to the COVID-19 related issues are unvaccinated according to the CDC. Let's use West Martin's story as an example that was taken by the Blue Ridge Public Radio News. This story offers a first-hand experience of how Mr. Martin, who was vaccinated, waited nearly 60 hours in an emergency room watching the unprepared and anxiety-induced understaffed nurses and doctors attending to the unvaccinated individuals within the ER room. By the time Mr. Martin was attended to, he was prepped and transferred to Atrium Wake Forest Baptist Hospital. It's, uh, unfortunately, the hospital itself was experiencing likewise issues. On inspection, his right diaphragm had been paralyzed and he was diagnosed with chronic pulmonary disease. Nearly 85 hours later, from his arrival to the ER, he was finally given the antibiotic, antibiotics and oxygen tanks to begin his recovery. Colleges play a huge role part huge part in this. Colleges tend to be placed in saturated areas with high and dense populations. This can help the virus multiply and replicate at a massive rate. This also doesn't take into account the holiday breaks, as well as students having the option to return home when they wish. Education data tells us that nearly 14.8 million students are enrolled in campuses along the United States. 71.1% of that college population attend four-year institutions. 28.9% attend two-year institutions. These numbers are far too large to ignore or disregard in any way. And these colleges can cause, these colleges cause an impact on hospitals and ER rooms across the, the states. This needs to be solved through the use of a vaccine mandate. With a vaccine administered, an individual is 11 times more likely to not die than someone who is not vaccinated, as well as a 90% reduction rate in transmission. Imagine all the people that will be protected through these vaccines. Through this mandate, we can ensure that individuals like Wes Martin will never have to, have to experience long life-threatening wait times like he did that day ever again. Now we also affirm education legality will not be a threat with the vaccine mandate ordered. Meningitis and meals vac vaccines are already required in most states for students to attend college in the first place. The COVID-19 is no different is no different. Uh, each of these other vaccine requirements are being met and cause no issues. The COVID-19 vaccine causes issues with compliance. Why is that? But let's provide alternative accommodations for students who wish not to accept regardless. Online schooling will still be an option as well as online tutoring and online study groups for individuals who have decided likewise. Tech support will be 24-7 to help distance, help, help distance learning individuals as well as online ad, advising sessions. We see more and more leniency for this mandate specifically than any of the others. In regard to having a vaccine mandate come onto campus, the mandate does not incite any difficulty or reason to deny such orders they were given. Okay. With copious amounts of evidence over the past year to back up the effectiveness of these vaccines, we can see the absolute necessity of the vaccine mandate. We implore you to take action to help make them become ratified for all colleges at a national level. Thank you. Hi, my name is Cade Smith, and I will be the first speaker for the negative side. Um, 
First, uh, I can say that my entire group and I, uh, we have nothing wrong. If you want to get the vaccine or not, that's not what we're talking about. Uh, but what we do have a problem with is forcing those against their will to get it, uh, which totally disregards their personal opinion and freedom to get the vaccine on their own accord. Uh, first, I want to say that this is sending an entirely wrong message towards those who are on the fence about getting the vaccine. Uh, there's a vast number of reasons to not get the vaccine, especially considering that it was made in hyperspeed uh, in a government-controlled lab. Uh, for example, the flu vaccine took almost 15 years to complete. Uh, the vaccine for typhoid fever took almost 30 years to complete. And the vaccine for smallpox took centuries to make. Not to mention the infamous yellow fever vaccine, which was created by scientists in a government-controlled lab in 1918. However, it's the perfect example of why vaccines need proper testing periods. Uh, the first vaccine that was made was completely thrown out of the window uh, after being administered to the public, and it only took a couple more decades to tweak out. I'm not saying uh, the vaccine for COVID is totally faulty. Uh, however, getting forced to get it for going to school, that's completely wrong. Uh, of course, I'm not forgetting, obviously, about modern technology, um, which has obviously decreased the time it takes uh, to get, uh, which obviously, um, obviously decreased the time it takes for doctors to help and cure the patients. Uh, but is there no room to even question the effectiveness of the vaccine? Uh, not to mention that many individuals are questioning not getting the vaccine because of the fact that vaccines worsen the consequences of the infection rather than protecting, um, which is a phenomenon referred to as antibody-dependent enhancement, or ADE for short. Uh, which, while developing the vaccine, ADE did, in fact, make an appearance uh, in numerous COVID vaccine trials and is definitely a worry to many who question if the vaccine would even be worth it for them in the long run. Uh, another huge point is that the vaccine mandates weren't even a conversation to be had up until now. Uh, it wasn't until Pfizer, Pfizer was FDA approved on August 21st, 2021, not too long ago, and Moderna even later, that the topic of vaccine mandates is even an acceptable argument to be had. Uh, the FDA says, quote unquote, an emergency use authorization is a mechanism to facilitate the availability and use of medical countermeasures, including vaccines during public health emergencies such as the current COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, under an EUA, FDA uh, may allow the use of unapproved medical products or unapproved uses of approved medical products in, in an emergency to diagnose, treat, or prevent serious or life-threatening diseases or conditions when certain statutory criteria haven't been met, uh, including that there are no adequate, approved, and available alternatives. Uh, there is an enormous difference in allowing vaccine mandates versus requiring them, hence why the conversation of vaccine mandates weren't valid up until this point. Uh, another reason that's definitely worth mentioning uh, are young Americans that are actually, uh, young Americans that are actually vaccinated are experiencing heart problems uh, after their vaccine. As NBC News recently reported, a higher number of usual, uh, a higher than usual number of cases of a type of heart inflammation has been reported following the vaccine, the Center of Disease Control and Prevention said. Uh, overall, 226 cases of myocarditis or pericarditis after vac uh, vaccination in people younger than 30 have been confirmed. Uh, the deputy director of the CDC's Immunization Safety Office said during a presentation to the FDA, uh, NBC notes. Like I said before, it's not necessarily the topic of whether you want to get it or not, but it's the topic of whether you should force these young adults to get something that they don't want to be, that they don't want injected into their bloodstream. Until this is 100% understood and resolved, no young person, no... Yeah. Awesome. That was my last sentence.
And for the rebuttal, do we both go out there, or can we both uh, stand up? Y'all can stay seated, y'all can stand up at the podium, all the way up. You want to stay seated? Um, yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, yeah. Is it all right if uh, we have the first question? Yeah. Of course. Yeah, it's all right. Thank you. So first question, it's going to be, uh, can you help just define ADE and the percentage of people? Um, so ADE, uh, I'm not sure about this exact percentage of the people who have been diagnosed with myocarditis uh, or pericarditis. Sorry, sorry, that's uh, different. ADE, uh, I'm not entirely too sure about the people that have developed ADE because of the COVID vaccine. However, there is proof uh, that while developing the vaccine and during vaccine trials, there were some participants that did, in fact, catch ADE. Um, one question uh, that I have for you guys, if, if that answers your question. Yes. Um, like you, you mentioned that accommodations will be put in place for those not wanting to be vaccinated. What would those accommodations be? Well, accommodations consisting of uh, other opportunities through online school. Uh, that can go from everything. I mean, we have online advising that we can go ahead and do for them. We can have online tutoring, study groups, uh, discussion boards, everything that you'd see in an in-person classroom can be put out into an out-person environment as well. Right. Does that help answer? Yes, it does. And I have one more question to add on to that. You mentioned uh, there would be more tech support. Would that, uh, would we have to add more jobs for that or how would that work? Not necessarily. Right. What we would do is provide a more as equal as we're putting a lot of effort in in-person students, we're going to put just amount of equal effort into out into people who are outside that do request that. So there is no difference at all determining between the two. We're going to treat them both as equal right. and give the equal experiences uh, and make it also more user friendly. Can I actually ask you a question? Yes. Yes. Uh, you mentioned uh, hyper hyper speed going in the vaccines if they're not safe, right? Right. Yes. Uh, now. We have like five more seconds. I started early. Oh, now the thing is that. Uh, the thing that, uh, well, a lot of the countries, uh, for this vaccine particular and this virus, a lot of the countries surround this one. So there's a lot more effort into it, you would agree, right?
according to Juan Rael, a medical doctor specializing in allergy and immunology, uh, these COVID vaccines only contain ingredients that can already be found within the human body. They include mRNA, lipids, which are fats, salts, and sugar. That's it. And as for um, the amount of people working on the vaccine, we actually had research from the SARS outbreak in 2002 to 2003 that we were able to adapt for this vaccine. Um, furthermore, mRNA can be quickly designed and scaled up if necessary. The manufacturing is uh, sequence independent, which makes it highly adaptable to different pathogens. It also costs way lower than any other platforms and will continue to decrease in cost as technology expands. Um, wanting to address uh, that these vaccine mandates are only coming into play now that the FDA has finally um, you know, officially proved it's not an emergency. Have you been watching the news? I mean, we've been wanting the vaccine and mask mandates for months and months. Um, it's just not true that it is only now an issue. Um, as for the adverse reactions uh, to the vaccine, um, according to the CDC, serious side effects that could cause long and short-term health problems are extremely unlikely following the vaccination, any vaccination, including COVID-19. In fact, the risk of triggering a severe allergic reaction stands at around a 1 in 900,000 chance. That's a, that's a very small chance comparative to um, putting into perspective UNT campus, um, it's only a 0.045 chance that a student will have an adverse side effect on campus. And that only includes around 366 people in America. That's not very many people. And vaccine monitoring, monitoring has historically shown that side effects generally happen within the first six weeks of receiving that vaccine. And millions of people have received this vaccine and so far, no long-term side effects have been detected. According to the National Vaccine Injury Com Compensation Program, which allows people who, be who believe they've been injured by vaccines um, to file a petition for reimbursement, in nearly 80% of the cases that received compensation from that program, Health and Human Services from the U.S. Department did not conclude that any vaccine caused, that those vaccines caused alleged injury. Uh, correlation does not imply causation. In order to prove that COVID vaccines are actually causing these side effects, there just needs to be more evidence. And uh, that's a long road. Again, as I'm, I'm not saying that um, people aren't having a, allergic reactions or getting sick, you just can't prove that it's vaccine caused until we have more long-term evidence on that. Um, Oh, also, vaccine mandates are constitutional and have been for over 100 years. They are protected under the 14th Amendment under police power. So it is not a big jump to want colleges to have that vaccine mandate when it is already in place in public schools across the world, across the U.S. Pardon me. Thank you. Joshua Bull. I'm going to be doing the attack speech for the negative side. Um, so just to start off, um, I want to kind of start off with the fact that you said that online schooling and tutoring was going to be an option. Um, it's actually really not an option for many individuals. You said that there would be accommodations such as um, advising, things like that, but there are many individuals out there that can't financially afford um, online schooling. You know, there's resources as well. There's Wi-Fi. There's um, laptops, things like that. And so many people can't afford it. So I think it's kind of harsh to say that um, we'll be able to provide them online schooling. A lot of people are at college um, scholarships, right? So that covers most of their schooling, but that doesn't include technology, right? Another thing is um, a lot of people have used online or have used in-person college to escape from a home life that they might have been facing before they came, right? I know personally whenever I was at home, life wasn't all that great with my family, right? And so coming here was kind of like an escape um, from my home life. And so doing online college would kind of, um, it would it might prevent people from escaping that home life, which could, which could cause some issues um, in terms of mental health and other things regarding um, possibly staying at home um, in terms of home life. Um, let's see, um, another thing is you said that we have online advising discussion boards that I also want to add one more thing about online thing. Um, a lot of people aren't able to develop a community online, okay? I know we didn't really cover it, 
but um, for me, I found it kind of hard to develop friends online. So having only online options would be really difficult for many who struggle to make friends and furthermore could impact mental health. Um, let's see, let's go to the speed of the vaccine development. Um, you said that um, you said that the vaccine was developed with previous 2002 info, um, but 2002 is almost two decades ago, and so I think it's kind of unfair to say that that that's valid information. Things could have changed. We don't really know what could have changed, but I think the amount of time that we had um, didn't really give us enough information in 2002 info. Um, let's see. Um, you said colleges aren't placed in high saturation area or are placed in high saturation areas. Um, that's not completely true. Um, for example, Texas Tech University, located in Lubbock, Texas, that is not a high saturation area. It might be with the college being present, but beforehand, it's just a flat area. So I think it's kind of invalid to say that that's, that's going to affect, um, you know, the, fact, the spread of the spread of COVID. Um, let's see. Um, you said that meningitis vaccines and COVID are no different in terms of like the speed of development. Um, meningitis did have a lot more time to develop, and I think that the COVID, COVID, I'm gonna go and drop that. Um, let's see. Um, let's see. Let's see. You said that uh, there are gonna be uh, symptoms are unlikely, and that there is a one in nine hundred thousand chance. But you also said that there are fourteen point eight million students in the U.S. Um, that are enrolled in public public universities. Um, so, are you basically saying that you're willing to let that one in nine hundred thousand student um, ratio still be effective? That kind of an ethicality issue that you need to discuss. You know, there's fourteen point eight million students. If you do the math, there's still students that are going to get affected by this vaccine. So I think it's kind of an ethicality notion at that point. Um, let's see. Um, Um, you said there is more leniency for the COVID vaccine mandate than any others. First, I'm not sure what your sources are because you didn't really specify, um, so I can't really elaborate on that. But I will say there are vaccine exemptions that already exist. Um, and there are many people that aren't actually vaccinated among us. I mean, not me, but there are people at UNT that aren't vaccinated, and you don't know that. So um, I think mandating it might be a little bit more challenging than you think because there's other people that um, are vaccinated. Um, and then Martin's story, um, you failed to say, I didn't hear how old Martin was. I was he a college age student and was, um, how did this relate to the actual needing to get mandated? I know you said that it would affect the, call, the, the hospitals, um, the, the load that they're getting, but I don't really see how that directly correlates to a direct needing to get, needing of a vaccine mandate. They're kind of just not understanding the correlation. Um, it's just kind of a lot of wind to cover. Um, and then, finally, let's see, um, yeah, I think that's all I have, so thank you. Is it okay if I take off the cross? Yeah, um, can we take some pressure? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. How much time do we have left? Like 40 seconds. Okay. Alright, so much. Alright. I think that with 
Okay, are we ready for the contact animation? Uh, yes. Ready? I'll go ahead and start with the first question. That's okay. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I want to say um, TCC, Tech, um, the community college, doesn't require vaccine mandates at all. So, what would you say to them um, in terms of meeting the COVID vaccine mandate? Will that apply to them as well? Uh, all public colleges. All public, colleges. all public colleges, that's the stance. Um, so wouldn't you agree that public spaces such as libraries and other uh, free tax paying um, institutions would be accessible to students who are having trouble with technology and uh, funding that? Say that again? Wouldn't you agree that public spaces such as libraries that are uh, state and government funded are accessible to students who have issues of uh, accessing technology for school? I would say that, but also what do you have to um there are also other means of, you know, transportation. How would they get there? What if they live in an area that's not near a library? What if they, they just don't have access to the research like a library or they don't have a bus route? There are other options, you know, there's other implications that could cause um, the inability to access those resources. There's like, also funding for those resources, such as Pell Grants and loans that are very accessible and that I actually own as well. Um, can I just shoot off one more yes, question? So, um, is it your stance that just because one in one, one person can potentially have a 0.05% chance of getting a severe side effect that there should not be a vaccine mandate? I think that's more of an ethicality question. Are you willing to let that that chance of that that student being affected? For a 0.05% um, chance, yes. I think it's worth it. Okay. To have potentially more people saved. Okay, that's more of like the, the, the railroad, the question. Are you willing to let one person get sick more than the other? But I will. Um, I, I can't answer that because that's an ethicality question. That's kind of a leaning way. I said, you know, it's two way. But I will ask you this: um, What would you say to Christian universities, the private Christian universities? You said just public, that's right? That's private. Okay, yeah. gotcha. Um, okay, so also one more thing: online students are actually proven sometimes needing to be vaccinated. It's been proven among a lot of colleges and universities. Stop. So. Okay. Okay. All right, you were talking about, I'm going to first talk about um, how you said there was no evidence that there was more research time or money put into these vaccines. That is false. It was said by the CDC um, and many other organizations um, in Europe. Um, the effectiveness is proven with um, not only are you five times more likely to be hospitalized without the vaccine, said by the CDC, but you're 11 uh, times more likely to die with the upcoming Delta variant that is the next wave of COVID. Um, you're also 63% less likely to spread this dangerous Delta variant to other people, and 73% with the Alpha variant. Um, also, vaccines were already implemented. You said that they weren't, um, and they have been even in Texas, where most people are against these uh, vaccines currently. With 25 other states, including Florida, which is another state, um, that are offering these um, vaccine mandates for higher schools or colleges. And you said with technology, Pell Grants and loans, you, you can apply for technology grants and other things like that through the school. It has to be through the school and then they can approve it as long as you ask the school and say, I need extra money and the government will give it to you and you can pull out more money for that. Um, you also said that old vaccines were not valid, but then before you said that they were because they had more time to develop. Um, that is a contradictory statement. And also SARS, this <laughs> SARS was a old vaccine and was worked on for multiple years. And this is SARS-2. So we already have most of that vaccination information for the specific variant. Um, so we didn't need as much time. Um, as for the uh, saying that willing to let, I mean, are you willing to let the vast majority of more than 99% of people 
to potentially die from this over the 0.05, I mean, yeah, 0.05% of the population that might get a symptom with over half of those just being headaches, as well as you were talking about exemptions. Um, very few people are actually getting exemptions, just like colleges of the University of Virginia at 97% vaccination rates, Pencil University of Pennsylvania at 83% for the employees and 86% for students, and the University of Vermont at 100% vaccination rates. So we can already see that not a lot of people are pushing for these exemptions, but they're offered. They're there for people that need them, whether it's health or religion. And um, we only need 85% vaccination rate to reach herd immunity. So I feel like that is a very, very important point. Um, as well as we're, if we're talking about the rights and legality of this being constitutional, um, in 1905, so over 100 years ago, Jacobson versus Massachusetts said that under the 14th Amendment that we can in, uh, implement <laughs> we can implement vaccines under police powers. Again, under the 14th Amendment. Um, also, it is a lot more safer. It's a lot safer safer to uh, push for uh, vaccine mandates than trying to do natural infection. Uh, herd immunity. This can cause very uh, high death rates, such as the uh, 766,000 deaths that have occurred in the U.S. and over uh, 47.4 million cases. Um, again, we are arguing that all public colleges and universities should adopt uh, the COVID vaccine mandates, and you did bring up private, so that is, again, not a, a valid point to what we are talking about. Um, and thank you. statistics that will go back and forth um, and, and we're not arguing with the logic of those statistics we're really not we're not argue, we're not arguing with the fact that people die from COVID we all know people who died from COVID I, I have friends I have a 30 year old friend who died from the vaccine I have uh, other friends who died from the disease itself I know people who have both died from the this disease itself and then people who died from the vaccines themselves I've seen people who have said, had side effects part of my stuttering. That's not what we're arguing. We're not arguing that the fact that not only do people our age, 20 or 18 to I think it's 30, that have um, a 0 0.006 mortality rate from COVID itself. Now we look at college towns like we live in, we're at UNT. How many people do you see around us that are majorly affected which are in the older age groups are really around here. Now we're talking about vaccines, right? Why would we get a vaccine when you can catch it twice, right? And people say, well, you know, it's not as, you know, the mortality rate's a lot lower with the vaccine, right? Okay, well, we're in an age group that has a 0 0.006 mortality rate to it. And you guys are over here talking about the side effects for it, which is 0 0.004 or seven, or as what I think you guys said, which is not a huge difference to me. Now, in terms of that, out of the, I believe it was 4,500 deaths that come from our age group in the last 20, January 2020 to now, current, that's uh, by Statista, um, which is backed by the CDC uh, data. We look at that and we think to ourselves, okay, so why are we pushing something that, yes, people get sick from it, but look at the flu, okay? Why are we why are we requiring vaccine mandates for the flu? For every vaccine that we could possibly push towards people, why wouldn't we push that towards everybody? Well, it's because of this. We talked about the ingredients earlier, all right? The one thing they failed to talk about was the uh, preservatives in the vaccine themselves, the sugars, and all those things that can go in it. Now, the preservatives alone have been known to be linked to certain types of diseases. We're not talking about that, we're talking about this. 
we're, we're talking about the fact that there are cause to be worried. There are cause to have beliefs against it. And there's cause that we have the freedom to not do that and still be educated and progress in America. Why would we as a nation, and this is what it's most important about, it's not, it's not whether or not we believe in COVID disease itself. It's not whether we believe in whether or not the vaccines work. Okay, chances are it does work. Chances are you're not gonna get sick from it. But there is a chance that you will. And there's people who've known other people who've died and stuff like that. And there's also people who don't believe in it. And that's, that is the right as an American to not believe in getting the vaccine. Just like people still, now, TCC, Trans Community College, just around the corner, does not require you to get vaccines or other things to go to that college. Now, just in that alone, people have other options already. Now, we have seen colleges, such like in the news lately, just such as New York, that you are still required, and even at, T, even at UNT it's alone, you're still required to have the vaccines just to be able to go to UNT, even online, just to be enrolled in the college itself, because that's what it is. And we also look at the strength of what a mandate is. That's the most important part about all this. So what is a mandate? So they have not once argued against the religious exemptions whatsoever. They have not once religious, uh, they have not once argued against uh, what it would mean to have you know, private and public colleges. Uh, however, anything state funded or anything like that, right? That's, that's, what they're, that's what they're going towards. Okay, so you're saying that we would still have the freedom to, what, not get vaccinated if we're going to private colleges and not be able to, um, and we could, what, stay at home with all that um, without having a vaccine? Part of the stutter. The thing is this, their mandate holds very little weight in effectiveness towards what the, real, what, what the world would require. Why would their vaccine mandate for the private colleges or the, the public colleges that just hold, it holds very little weight to what their actual mandate would, come, uh, would have? Especially when the public colleges, they're just gonna lose a lot more business. And not even that, they're standing for something that's making a message against Americans that it's not only that they're being cattle prodded into having vaccines, but it's always that the fact that it's taking the stance of the vast majority is more important than the individual, which is, I'm pretty sure, Stop. against our countries. I'm sorry, I've been stuttering and like slurring my words it's so bad. Can we have the first question? Yes. Oh, yeah. All right, perfect. Um, so I just wanted to, again, reiterate that this debate is only about public colleges and their communities. The other world does not have to, uh, it's not relevant to this. Um, but I just wanted to ask, um, aren't there uh, professors? Don't people have families? There are other people in age groups um, in colleges that need to be protected. Um, what is your, what would you say to them? Well, for they can get the vaccine if they want. I mean, that's that's one of those things where they're allowed to have the vaccine. If, if they're going to be, if they're going to have a job there, I mean, hey, they don't have to get the vaccine if they don't want to. That's their job. But if they do want to get it, well, they can get it to protect their family. Their family can be vaccinated. vaccinated. That's exactly the point that you're making yourself. The yeah. fact that the vaccines are pr protecting people, right? Wait, yeah, wouldn't you agree that what, our if, mandate allows the exemptions and allows people to opt out, then your point is moot because it still allows personal freedom? Not if they're required to. Well, no that's what I said. There is no, it's a mandate, but a mandate is a flexible term. You have options. Yeah, but that. just the strength that you're talking about, the fact that you could say that you're mandated to, you know, wear a shirt and you're wearing to wear all that, like, that's a huge thing. Obviously, we want everyone to wear a shirt, right? And there's obviously laws, of, laws for that. But that's the fact that if I were to mandate you that everybody needs to wear a certain colored hat or something like that, which is a, a smaller argument to it. I'm going to go and ask a question just yeah. to get up the, the next topic. Um, can you just clarify? I heard um, you say 0 0.05. 0, yeah, 0.05. 0.05. Okay, gotcha. I, that's what I heard. I just wanted yeah. to clarify the number because I wasn't sure. Um, because I just want to, were, the, were those symptoms, were they, were those symptoms um, for like, severe side effects? Okay, gotcha. Because no, it wasn't even, it wasn't for severe side effects. It was actually just for any side effect. At okay, all. that's what I was because I heard somebody say that it was for severe, and I heard somebody say that it was just for just non-severe. So I just wanted to. I apologize. It was a different statement. 
statistic that I could use. And I, so, I like that's one more thing too. So when you said when you're talking about the mandates and stuff like that, and you're talking about the exemptions to the mandates, um, in terms of that, so are you saying that anybody can claim to believe against it? And there are it, only three religions that have um, actual. So who's 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 to claim that they are to validate someone's religion? Well, it's such a small percentage of people who are going for exemptions. Like for example, the University of Virginia. They, so why does it matter then? Because you said her immunity is at eighty-five percent, and then not only that. We have more than 85 percent, so why does it matter that you're pushing that on the rest of people? Not every university has over 85 percent. It is the leading universities that are over 85 percent. And also, we're not arguing against uh, exemptions because, you know, that's the right of America to have exemptions right. for those things. We are arguing to push some of those people that don't need exemptions or don't believe they should have an exemption just to push them into getting a vaccine. Closer to the herd immunity, yeah. closer to a safer community for college students. So you're saying this, so that if I was a conservative, so to say, and Hi. I didn't believe in it. Okay. Uh, can you use some prep time, please? Uh, you have to Thank you. debate due to the clear facts stated for the health and safety concerns during this pandemic. We demonstrate that nearly 71.4% of individuals who are in, in the hospital due to COVID are unvaccinated according to the CDC. People who are fully vaccinated against COVID-19 are far less likely to infect others, despite the arrival of the Delta variant, several studies have shown. The full effect of vaccines reducing transmissions is even higher than 63% because most vaccinated people don't become infected in the first place. In addition, the education legality of other vaccines that include meningitis and measles and how the COVID vaccine is no different in matters of colleges mandating students to get vaccinated in order to protect their students. This includes many exemptions within colleges like religious, medical, and personal exemptions within the vaccine mandate. Even if you still decide to not get vaccinated, you have the choice of online schooling. And if you cannot access, access internet, colleges are willing to give you grants to allow you to access online schooling. This is, a, this is a first for our education system to allow other options within their education. 
As a, as a society, and especially for students in pursuit of education, we have to take action, action now to help prevent more needless deaths that will happen with the next wave without the mandate. Is college about education or business? We talked about if you were a conservative, this is not a politic game. This is a safety of matter. This is a, a matter of safety. 4,000 deaths have happened during this pandemic, and even more deaths have happened. This, there is a greater amount of people who die from COVID than the side effects of the vaccine. We value human life over opinions and politics, and that is why we have one. This is not, again, about whether or not this is, like, the vaccine is a bad idea. It's not about health. We win this argument because this is about logic. This is about the freedom and the principles that this country is founded on, more than anything else. We talk about whether more people are dying, less people are dying, people are still dying from both. And, and that's the, the hard truth of it. We win this argument because we point out the fact that people should still have a choice to have access to government facilities, government-backed facilities, government funds, scholarships and such. And who's to say that this doesn't go farther? Right? Who's to say that the government is to be trusted? That's why the freedom is important here. This is about trust. This is about your individual right that is protected by our Constitution. While we're talking about constitutional rights, that is backed by exemptions, which, by the way, makes mandates non-significant. For the reason of exemptions are just a choice to believe in something. The exemptions that we're talking about are the personal belief that something is right or wrong, which in instance eradicates the mandate in itself. You talk about we're just gonna mandate it and then give other people the options to decide if it's a valid man if it's a valid exemption or not, that's giving someone else power, and that is not something that America stands for. That's giving someone else power over what you believe in. That's giving somebody else power over your right to safety, your right to belief and your right to live how you want to live in the way that other people can live too. This is about equality, right? That's what America founded on, equality. So if somebody else has the right to decide that, or if somebody else has the ability to decide that I'm gonna make you get something that you do not wanna get, regardless of your belief, there's people out there who believe that the earth is flat. Doesn't mean it's right, but they have the right to believe that. And those people still have the right to do everything else that we do. That's what separates us from other countries. It's not the fact that it makes it right. It's not the fact that it makes it wrong. It's not the fact that health is at stake. Because when you look at it, the people who are not vaccinated are really are not posing any risk to people who are, are vaccinated. That's the whole purpose of the vaccination. It's my right to put myself in danger by driving a car. It's my right to do any activity that would put me in danger. This is America. This is my ability to live how I want to live, why I want to live it, and, and that's up to me, nobody else. That is what we're fighting for. And the government, and this is a government-backed thing, so it's giving the government the power to tell you that you cannot do something for the greater good, that is socialism. That is literally socialism. We're here to protect the individual right not to take it away for other people. Thank you. Okay, that was it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that was great. Fantastic. Yeah, that was good.
Okay. Um, if you need to sign up for extra credit and all that, paper's right here. I'm choked. I'm choked. I was like, did I make any sense of...